Part four, how to outlast tough times. How do you outlast tough times? This is the overcoming series. And uh, we've already been taught, number one, you've got to meditate. Everybody say meditate. Meditate means you've got to self-talk. In other words, when the devil starts talking, you start talking, all right? When the devil says, ah, you're a nobody, all you've got to do is say, well, that's not what God says. God says that I'm an overcomer. God says that he loves me. God is for me. And sometimes you just got to tell the devil to be quiet and go back where he came from. You've got, listen to me. I'm going to tell you, you've got authority in the name of Jesus. It don't take a, a television evangelist. It don't take a pastor standing in front of you. Listen to me. God says that you have all power in the name of Jesus Christ. You've got the resurrection in you. That means when the devil comes at you, you can say, oh, no, 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 no. Greater is he that is in me than he is in the world. I, I command Satan to flee in the name of Jesus Christ. You've got all the power, all authority in you right now. Right now, you've got that. It don't take me laying hands on you. You've got it in you right now. So you've got to activate that, okay? You've got to activate that. So you've got you to meditate. You've got to self-talk. Number two, you've got to be like a tree. Y'all remember that? You've got to be like a tree that is planted. You've got what? Deep roots. In other words, watch me. When problems come, you don't run. See, God don't run away from problems. God runs to problems. Christians are the masters. Churches are the masters that when something starts happening, they tuck their tail and they run. But that's not what God says. God says, though hell may come against you, heaven will rise up in you. Though the devil may taunt you and talk about you, that's not what God says. God said he's got you in the palm of his hand. I've never seen God fumble. I've never seen God fumble. I've never, ever seen God hand the ball off to the wrong player. God will score a touchdown every time if you allow him. Now listen, there's going to come a point in your life where you're going to have to make a choice. Here's the decision. Y'all ready? Here it is. It's simple, but it's profound. Either we believe it or we don't. Either we believe this or we don't. And so here's what God's commissioned me today to tell you guys. Number two, you've got to be like a tree that's planted. You've got deep roots by the springs of living water. You gotta, the water represents the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit lives in us. So guess what? We're going to win. We're going to win. Amen? Right. And the third part is this. You've got to realize in the midst of your battle, surely there's a vein of silver. Surely. There's a vein of silver. What does the vein of silver mean? It means I have been redeemed. Watch this. We got to walk and live like we've been redeemed. How many of you know? How many of y'all glad you're going to heaven? That's what I call redemption. That I don't have to die and go to hell. That I have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. That Jesus bled silver on the cross. That when he died, he redeemed everybody in here. Now, it's your choice if you're going to go to heaven or hell. But... God, he bled silver. So today, if you have your Bible, Job chapter 28 is where we're going to go real quick. Job chapter 28, verses 1 through 3. I'm reading out of King James today. I'm excited that you're here today. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm an overcomer. I thought about singing Mendisa's song, Overcomer, but uh, they told me not to do that, so I'm not going to do it. Then we wouldn't have no church. <laughs> but anyway, Job... Chapter 28, verses 1 through 3. If you dare say amen. Good deal. Good deal. Turn to your neighbor again. Say, I'm an overcomer. Now tell him, I'm going to win. Now go deeper. I've already won. How many of you already won? It's good stuff, man. You got to believe it. You got to believe it. Here we go. Job chapter 28, verses 1 through 3. It says, surely. Everybody say, surely. Yeah, I like y'all going to wake up. Surely there is a vein for the silver, vein of silver, and a place for gold, where they find it. Not find it, but find it. Iron is taken out of the earth. And brass is molten out of the stone. In verse 3, my main scripture today, very first part of it. He setteth an end to darkness. He setteth an end to your darkness. Everybody say this. He setteth an end to my darkness. Come on, say it again. He setteth. An end to my darkness. Now watch this. That means you're not going to be in the valley forever. That means whatever you're going through right now, there's going to be an end to it. It's going to stop, and you'll see light at the end of the tunnel. So how do you outlast tough times? One point, really quick. Here we go. The first point is this. Proclaim 
There is an end to darkness and keep digging. Proclaim it. Proclaim it. You got to proclaim that there is an end to darkness and then you got to do this. Keep digging. Now remember this. You ready? Life and death is in the power of your tongue. Life and death is in the power of your tongue. So that means this. You've got to start proclaiming healing in your marriage. You've got to start proclaiming that greater is God than greater is the devil. You've got to start talking and speaking and even telling yourself that you're going to come out. You're not going to stay down. Oh, you may be in ashes for a little while, but you're going to come out. You've got to start proclaiming that. Because listen, if you don't proclaim it, Here's what's going to happen. You're going to have the devil's language and not God's language. Most Christians, watch me, most Christians, here's what they do. They'll come up and they'll tell you everything that is wrong with them and never tell you anything what God has done for them. What God is looking for, excuse me, let me interrupt this service really quick. What the devil hates and what God is looking for is a warrior. What God is looking for is somebody to stand up and say, hey, I know it's not looking good, and I know I don't feel good today, but you know what? I'm not going to let the devil outshout my God today. I'm going to praise him no matter what happens. I feel good. Even though I don't, I feel good. There's some Sundays I'm not going to lie. I come in here, and I don't want to lift my hands. But guess what I do? I keep digging. Guess there's some Sundays I come in here, I'm not going to lie. I don't feel like praising. But guess what I make myself do? I make myself keep digging. I make myself stand up and say, Brian, I know you don't feel like it this morning. And I know God knows your heart. But I'm telling you all this morning, God it looks at your heart. God's looking for warriors to stand up. And what's going to get you through the battle? What's going to get you through the storm is that praise that's in you. I'm telling you, there's a reason why the tribe of Judah led the tribe of Israel. Because Judah was the tribe that worshipped God. What God is looking for, somebody help me preach. He's looking for a church that will rise up in the bad times, good times, and lead in worship. He's looking for some praise in the house. That no matter how it looks, no matter what the Dr. Porter sound looks like, no matter what the doctor tells me, I'm telling you, until God speaks it, it's not going to happen. If God's for you, you'll live. I'm telling you, there's a point in time for man to die. A point it. But if it's not your time, you ain't going to die. You're not going to die. What God is looking for, what, what Job found out is this. He said, even though I'm in my ashes, and even though I'm having a hard day, and even though I lost seven sons and three daughters, I'm going to praise my God. And I know it don't make sense here on earth because the world will tell you that you're done. You're over. It don't look good. Go on home, church. It's over. Close the doors. But I'm here to tell you today, I feel God in my spirit right now, that if God be for us, nobody can stop us in this house. You've got to let this rise in your spirit. See, the problem with the church, we've been to church too long. Truth. You've been sitting in a chair. Listen, all, here's what's wrong with the church. Y'all ready? Now, hold on. I'm going to get one toe. You, there comes a time when you've got to quit reading the Bible and you've got to become the 67th chapter of the Bible. There's got to come a time in your life you've got to quit saying, I know what God said, and now you've got to say, I know that God done it. I know he paid for it. I know at the cross it is finished. That'll, 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 that'll help you all more than anything in this world. That if negativity starts coming up, Say, listen, that ain't what God said. That's not what the Lord said. God didn't say that. God said, by his stripes, I was healed. I am healed. And I'm going to stay healed. That's what God said. You got to, to be an overcomer. People look at me all the time and say, Brian, I want what you got. My question back to you is this. Are you willing to go through the hell that I went through to get where I'm at? Because everybody wants an easy believism and everybody wants an easy gospel. But let me tell you something. Salvation will cost you. It's, not, it's more than saying, I admit and believe and confess. Because then the devil don't have you no more. And he's after you. So what I'm trying to convince the churches is what the Bible said. You've got to fight for your right. Hallelujah. Not to party, but to have the Holy Ghost in your life. There comes a time that we've got to stand up and say, this is what God said. You know, I'm not going to back down off this. What God said. I know I may be the most unpopular pastor in the world, but watch this. I don't care. 
I'm to a point in my life I'm free. I'm not under church rules no more. I'm not under man dictating me no more. You can't buy a man of God. You can't buy these things. What I'm trying to tell the church, when we believe what we've been hearing, what we've been seeing, until it becomes a reality to us, you've got to believe it. That when someone lays hands upon you and they say, you shall be healed, I receive that. I receive that. I receive my healing. I'm just not hearing it. I receive it. I receive that. I've seen God heal too many people. My mama was in the first service being healed twice of cancer. I've seen it. Somebody may be under my voice today. Here's how powerful the word of God is. When the word of God goes forth, the Bible says in Isaiah that it shall not return void. All somebody's got to do is stick their hands up and say, Hey, I receive it, Lord. It's mine. You paid for it, and I receive it today. You've got to receive it, though. And see, people's going to look at us like we're crazy. They're, gonna look, they're, they're looking at us like we're crazy. What's going on at Elkhorn? It ain't Elkhorn. What's going on with the praise? Not the praise. What's going on with preachers? Not the preacher. It is the Word of God. It's Jesus all the way. And I'm so crazy, I believe it. You've got to believe it. There's going to come a point. Listen to me. When you're going to stand before God, He's going to look you in the eye. And He's not going to ask you what church you went to. Oops. He's not going to ask you what denomination you came from. He's going to say, do I know you? Can I look through the Lamb's book of life and find your name? And if your name is not there, let me make it as plain as Kentucky as I can. If your name is not found in the Lamb's book of life, that means one thing, you will be going to hell. Can I get any plainer? It's not about your action, about your pocketbook, your church attendance, your denomination. It's about the King of kings and the Lord of lords. It's about Jesus. And that's all you get at this church. That's all you get. Woo! Stirs up, God! Oh, hallelujah! Job was sitting in a pile of ashes. And Job said, I want to decree one last thing. I love this. Job said, I want to decree one last thing. He looked up into heaven. He said, God, I've meditated on you day and night. No matter what, I'm not going to give up. I'm like a tree that is planted by the streams of living water. I got the Holy Ghost in me. Born again, filled with the Holy Ghost. And number three, he said, now here I am. Surely, Lord, there is a vein of silver. But I love the last thing he said. He said, there will be an end to my darkness. There will. Listen to me. I don't know who I'm speaking to this morning. I don't know who, what mom I'm speaking to, what daddy I'm speaking to, what church attender I'm speaking to. But I'm telling you, listen to this pastor this morning. There is an end to your darkness. Hallelujah. There is an end to sin. There is an end to the devil. There is an end to all this mess. And you know why? Because his name is Jesus. That's it. That's it. There's an end. No matter what y'all, y'all fill in the blank. Brian, you don't understand what I'm going through. Oh, yes, I do. I've had two babies die. How about you? Brian, you don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yes, I do. You're looking at a divorced man in front of you. Yes, I do know what you're going through. So I wonder why God put me through all that. Can I tell you? You are the reason. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. I don't go through what I go through for me. I go through and you go through what you're going through for somebody else. That you are a testimony. I feel the Lord this morning brewing. You are a testimony. Oh, you may have had me in my ashes. You may have had me down. But I'm rising up because the Holy Ghost is in me. There's an end to your darkness. How many of y'all received that this morning? There's an end to your darkness. Now, I just felt it in my spirit. I know what I'm preaching. I believe what I'm preaching. You say, well, Brian, you do it for the money. Oh, really? Keep your money. Brian, you do it for this. No. See, I can see how I can see your face. Some of you sitting there going, I don't know about all that, Brian. I'm telling you, listen to me. Very, I'll help you more than anything right now. Believe God. Believe Jesus. Believe the Lord. He will do from Genesis in the beginning to the last amen and revelation and everything in between. He's still God. Hallelujah. He's still God. He will do what he says he will do. Quit questioning his authority. God wants to grow his kingdom. God wants to bless his people. 
And most people are walking around living a cursed life than they are a blessed life. The reason why is because they have believed the voice of the enemy and they've not took God at his word. Hallelujah. Watch this. I'm going to really mess y'all up now. You ready? Told y'all at the very beginning of the service, I'm praying double portion on you. I'm praying double portion. If you're taking notes, I want you to put down October the 13th 2013 is my day of double portion. Listen to me. Y'all got to believe this word. Listen, if y'all don't believe it, you're wasting your time. All you are is religious. God told Job, you didn't go through what you went through for nothing. Oh, I'm going to preach a little bit. Let me preach for five minutes. He said, what you went through, it may have cost you, but what I'm going to give you is called double for your trouble. Double, everybody write it down, double for your trouble. That means whatever you're going through now, y'all can laugh, you can say whatever you want. I'm going to prove it in the Bible here in just a moment. You're not going through it for nothing. You're going through it for something. You not, may not be you, may be somebody else, but I'm telling you, God's going to give this church, if you're under my voice today, he's going to give you double for your trouble. I want y'all to hold your hands up real quick. Everybody right here, hold your hands up. This is no joke in here. Man, I feel the Lord right now, the unction of God just drawing me. If you can't get both of them up, raise a toe, raise a foot, whatever you got to do. I want y'all to say, God, today I receive double for my trouble. Lord, today I receive double, come on, for my trouble. I'm not staying down. I'm coming out. I'm an overcomer. And God loves me. I receive it today. Come on, amen. How many of y'all receive double for your trouble today? Come on, double for your trouble. Double for your trouble. It's payback. Double for your trouble. God is good. And all the time, you got to believe this church. You got to believe this church. You've got to let that God start rising up in you. It's more than a Sunday morning on October the 13th. Welcome to a Holy Ghost party. Welcome where God says welcome to church. Woo! Hey! You say, Brian, you just tore up. I sure am. Because I've sat on ashes. I know what it's like to walk into an emergency room where the doc says it don't look good. I know what it's like to have people in your family who's got cancer. I know what it's like to sit in a jail cell. I know what it's like to have alcohol on your breath. I know. But let me tell you, i got to testify just for a moment. I know where God's brought me from. And I'm telling you, Daniel Cook, in the name of Jesus, your best days are yet ahead. Double for your trouble. Woo! I feel the Lord. Bring it on, devil, because i got the Lord on my side. Oh, I feel the Lord. Hallelujah. God, I feel the Lord. How many of y'all feel the Lord? This is good, isn't it? This is what it's supposed to be like. Double for your trouble. Double for your trouble. Double for your trouble. Oh, Joe, I can just see him now. Go ahead, devil. Hit me with your best shot. Go ahead, devil. Kick me while I'm down. Because I'm an overcomer. I'm coming out. I'm a tree planted by the streams of living water. I'm going to meditate day and night. And surely there's a vein of silver. And until that time, I'm going to declare that darkness has its final day. Y'all see how the Bible works? Let him speak. Let him say, I know some of you saying, I don't know about that double for your trouble. I don't believe that. Watch this. God don't care what you believe. It's, watch this. Watch this. The Bible is not up for vote. The Bible has been established from the very beginning. All God is begging for His people to say, Yep, Lord, that's right. I agree with you that you're faithful and you love your children. You love your family. You're for me. You're not going to hurt me. You're not going to put disease on me. Listen, y'all have been blaming God when you should be blaming the devil. Golly, that's a good word. If we... We'll get as mad at the devil as we get mad at God. There'll be less problems in the world today. I hear it all the time. Why did God take my loved one away from me? God didn't. Satan did. I'm going to stop all these lies. 
by the authority of God in the name of Jesus Christ. God says, I come to give life and life more abundant. Satan's job is to steal, kill, and destroy. Start blaming the devil and get mad at the devil and put him under your feet and say, devil, that's where he's going to stay. Amen? Somebody testify today. That's where he's going to stay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, I feel the anointing just staring in this place. Hallelujah. I don't know why you're going through the storm you're going through, but you're coming out. I don't know why you've got pain in your life right now, but you're going to come out. There's an end to darkness. There's an end to your problems. And listen, here's the sad part. You can sit here this morning, and you can hear it, and you can even feel the Spirit rising up in you, and you can say, I'm a winner. But if you go out and say, I don't know, lost it. See, it's in the, oh, i got to preach this. God just spoke to me, boy. You know why Job won? You know why Job won? He kept swinging. He kept digging in the dark. Check this out. He couldn't see what was in front of him, Shannon. He didn't know what was in front of him. All he could do was feel. And I can see a lot of Christians today who say, Brian, I'm in the middle of the tunnel. Brian, I don't know what's going on. I'm sad. I'm depressed. And listen to me. That, there is a demon called depression. But you've got to tell that demon that he's defeated. You've got to tell that old demon who you belong to and who you are and whose you are. And you've got to let that spirit say, Brian, that's just a feel-good emotion. Listen, you call it what you want, and we'll see who wins. Because I say that God's going to win. I say that God's going to do what he said he's going to do. This is what he said he's going to do, and he's going to do it. That means this. If your kids are acting crazy, plead the blood of God on them. Plead the, this morning, I was so proud of my son. Blake, I'm 23 years of age. He walked in, he works third shift, he only gets to come to church every other weekend. And I'll never forget this morning, he just blessed me. He made his old daddy break this morning. He came up to me, I said, Blake, how are you doing? He said, I'm tired. He said, I made myself stay up so I could come to church today. Yeah, Good job, Dana. Yeah. I looked at him, I said, oh, you're my sermon today, son. I said, you kept digging. He digged and he dug and he kept digging and digging and digging until he hit silver. Hallelujah. And what I'm trying to tell everybody here today, whether you want to or not, whether you don't want to praise him or not, just keep digging and stand up and say, God, I praise you anyhow. I praise you anyhow. And it works. It works. You say, Brian, you don't understand. God does. See, God hurts with you. God cries with you. God holds on when everybody else lets go. But I'm here today to tell you this. Listen to me. One of your greatest weapons you have as a Christian is called keep digging. Keep digging. You see, it's in the middle of the valley where the lights go out. It's in the middle of a tunnel where the lights go out. It's in the middle of, a, of losing a child where it seems the lights go out. It's in the middle of you you're feeling halfway depressed where you say, oh, Brian, I just can't go on no more. I understand where you're at. I'm not one of these type of preachers going up here and go, shame on you. I understand that hurt is real. I understand that depression is real. But I'm telling you, if you'll listen to me, God is more real. Some of you just got to square yourself up and say, you know what? October the 13th, 2013 is my day. I'm going to keep digging. It's my day. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep digging. Listen, so how do you... How do you outlast tough times? How do you, guys, how do you do it? And I want y'all to talk to me. I know it's Sunday morning, and I know we got a lot of people here today, but we, we're giving a word today. We're giving a word that's going to go to your spirit. How do you outla outlast tough times? You keep digging. In tough times, hard times, family times, school times, you lose friend times, I'm telling you, if you'll keep digging, You'll find silver. You'll find gold. But more than anything, you'll find the presence of God. Whether you're down, make yourself get up and praise God. If you don't feel like it, make yourself praise God. I'm telling you, if you keep digging, if you'll keep digging, you'll get out. You say, Brian, what about you? Oh, I've had to dig. Watch this, guys. Y'all ready, Tommy? I'm still digging. There's been times I've wanted to close the good old book. And say, God, you started it. You finish it. 
Oh, when we lost our babies, I told God, boy, I went through a old sad time. And I said, God, there's people out there that's aborting kids. There's people out there, Courtney, you know what I'm talking about. Y'all, how many of y'all can testify to what I'm saying today? That you had that old God, God called you and said, you know what, Lord? They're out there doing that. Here I am. I'm a Christian. I'm a pastor. I'll be a good daddy. And God said these words, don't make sense, don't make sense, don't make sense at all. Your best days is yet ahead. Elkhorn, guest, your best days, if you'll listen to me, is yet ahead. I've seen God work. When I first came to Elkhorn Baptist Church, it was over in that little sanctuary, running about 130 people. Within one month, we came back over to this house here. And here we are, four, four or five years later, we're at two services, averaging over six, uh, 600 people. The offerings are over 12,000. And you said to go, Brian, I don't know. Keep digging! Keep digging! Keep digging! God will get you out! He'll get you out of that. So watch this. I know some of you are still looking at me and saying, I don't know about that double portion. All right. I'm going to prove one more thing to you. Y'all got, got me for four, five more minutes. I was going to say four, but God said five. Here we go. Job chapter 42. Y'all write this down. Whew, golly, it's been good today. Job chapter 42. Double portion. Double for your trouble. I'm coming out. I'm an overcomer. I'm not going to stay in my ashes. Devil, you better hit me with your best shot because I'm coming out stronger than ever before. Job chapter 42, verses 12 through 17. This is so good. Job chapter 42. This is a man who lost it all. Even his wife said, curse God and die. That God that you're serving, here's what his wife said. That God that you're serving, that God that you worship every Sunday at Elkhorn, that God that you hear and that God there, curse him and die. He ain't going to come through for you. Watch this. You say, Brian, that's pretty hardcore. It's life. Welcome to life. Job chapter 42, verse 12 through 17. It says, so the Lord. Look at this. Blessed what? The latter end of Job, more he did his beginning. I'm just going to shut up and let that get in your spirit. But Brian, he did this and he did that. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. God, I received this today. For he had 14,000 sheep. He started out with seven. God says, Job, I'm going to give you double for your trouble. He gave him 14,000 sheep. 6,000 camels, and a 1,000 yoke of oxen, and a 1,000 she-asses. I like that word. Let's go on. I'll get text messages over that one. Because, see, y'all missed the whole sermon. Y'all worried about she-asses. If y'all email me or text me, watch this. Delete. Right. He had also seven sons and three daughters. You say, Brian, I thought he lost it. He got it back. Watch this. Oh, it gets so good. This, watch this. Come on now. Come on. Click it, clicker, clicker. Oh, go on, connect verse. That's got all them big names. And in the land were no women found so fair. I'm talking about they had the bling bling. His girls were pretty. I'm talking about mama and daddy. Daddy, you wouldn't want, to, I'm telling you, you wouldn't send these girls to school. They'd be homeschooled. You know what I'm saying? Watch this. They were fair. They were beautiful. They were off the chain. They were the bomb diggies. You know what I'm saying? As the daughters of Job. And their father gave them an inheritance among their brethren. Watch this. Watch this. After this. Hold on. After this. After what? After all the pain. After all the hurt, after all the depression, after all the anxiety, after losing his seven sons and his three daughters, after their house is burning, after blisters and boils coming up on Job's body, after him shaving his head and ritting his clothes and sitting in ashes, watch this. After this, he lived, Job lived an extra 140 years. Double. He was 70 when that happened to him. Y'all got this? And he saw his sons... And his sons, sons, even four generations. I prophesy that over your life here today. 
I speak that over your life here today. Because I know some of you are going through some junk. You got junk in your trunk. You got some things going on in your life. You're saying, Brian, you don't understand. I may not, but he does. He does. So I just stopped by today to tell you that, oh, by the way, Job lived to be 210 years old. 210 years of age. You say, Brian, I don't want to live to be that old. You won't then. I'm telling you the truth this morning. Most Christians sign their own death warrant. Most Christians speak the devil's language. And if Christians would ever get this one key, right here, Robbie. Robbie, you told me a while back, I'll never forget this. God just spoke this into my heart. I went to the nursing home to see you. How old are you? 30 years of age. 31 Friday. 31 Friday. Right, let's, let's, let's love Robbie. Friday, he's going to be 31. Everybody send him a birthday card. You say, Brian, you just told him. Well, good. You got your blessing then, all right? <laughs> Robbie told me. I, I'll never forget. I said, Robbie, does it bother you that you're in a wheelchair? See, Robbie's 30. He lives in a nursing home. And this young man rose up and he said these words. He said, Brian, mess me up. He said, I wouldn't go back for nothing. He's living more in a wheelchair than most Christians who are walking on two feet. He is, guys. I wouldn't go back because he's got more of God now than he ever has. He's born again. See, a wheelchair, there's a lot of Christians not walking. This baby's walking in the Spirit. He's walking in the Spirit. He's living in the Spirit. And what I'm trying to tell Christians is this. Listen to me. He wouldn't go back. And we got so many Christians who don't even want to go forward. I'm trying to help you this morning. You got to realize I'm going to meditate day and night. When the devil starts talking, I can outshout the devil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, and also I'm a tree, Tootie. I know what I look, you know what I'm saying? I got a little root right there. Little branches sticking out. <laughs> but I'm a tree planted by the deep waters. And I'm hooked up to the living water called the Holy Ghost. And I got something in me that's not for sale that when everybody else lets me down, the Holy Spirit will raise me up. I hope y'all can preach this. And man, even though it don't look good, and I'm sitting in my ashes this morning, and Brian, you don't understand what I'm going through. Surely there's a vein of silver. Surely there's redemption out there. And until I get my redemption, there's going to be an end to darkness. And until that time, Stuart, I'm going to keep digging. See, that's what messes religious people up. That's what messes the world up, man. They're sitting there going, won't you give up? I can't. I got too much to live for. I told the Lord, I said, God, I, I, you know, I love heaven. I, love, I can't, you know, I can't wait to get there. But here's the deal. I'm going to be honest with you all this morning. I sort of like living down here a little bit. And people are lost and dying and going to hell. And I told the Lord, I said, Lord, please let me live for one reason and one reason only. Not to be the biggest church in Campbell's. But that don't impress me and it don't impress God. Because there's lost people. Right now in this service, right now, right now. There's lost people. Right now, they're sitting beside you. And listen, what messes a lost person up is when they look at a Christian and say, man, I gave up a long time ago. I met an ex-deacon on, at a bar, on a bar stool at a, at a bar one night. He said, Brian, what was you doing there? See, I know how y'all are. I was working for Overhead Door Company, and the spring broke, and I sit up there on a bar stool with him. And he listened, I said, who? I said, what's your name? He told me his name. He said, you're a preacher, aren't you? Dude knew me. So here's the deal. Lost people know who you are. Lost people know how you live. And if you're like this, you're doing the same thing lost people are doing. If you're not believing, you're doing the same thing lost people are doing. But see, I believe that if you're born again and saved and had a Damascus Road experience, I believe there'll be a light come on in your life. The Holy Ghost will come up in you and you'll live different. You'll talk different. You'll act different. Amen? So how do you do it? Meditate. You're like a tree planted by the streams of living water. Surely there's a vein of silver, and I know there's going to be an end to my darkness. But until I get to the light, I'm going to keep digging. Amen. Y'all getting this word? Because here's the deal. When you walk out, don't be calling me money and going, Brian, the devil did it again. <laughs> Giving up is no option. 
See, here's what I know. I'm going to die one day. How many of y'all know you're going to die? Praise team, y'all come. Watch this. 100% fact, youth group, you're going to die. Every one of you are going to die. 100% fact. Here's the question now. Are you ready? I didn't say, are you religious? Are you ready? That if your appointed time happens right now, right now, your first breath will either be in heaven or to be in hell. Are you ready? Adults, 100% fact, one day you're going to take your last breath. Question is this, are you ready? Are you ready? How do you know you're ready? So you got to talk. And so today, here's what I'm going to ask you. While they're playing, if you were to take that last breath, or whatever, you, if you're on a pile of ashes this morning, I'm going to ask you guys to please, just start praising God. Start praising God. Some of you guys may need to be anointed with oil. We believe in anointing with oil at this church. We believe in laying hands upon people. We believe, we believe that there's power in prayer. We believe all the Bible. We leave nothing out. We believe in everything from Genesis to Revelation and everything in between. You're at a good house this morning. And watch this, y'all ready? God is waiting for you right now. Do not walk out them two doors the same way you walked in. If you do, you'll walk out depressed. But I'm telling you this morning the way God's working right now, right now, God's speaking. You know how I know? Listen. Not even a baby. Not even a baby's crying. See, this is good. This is so good. We call it abnormal because we're used to the noise of the world. But God calls this normal. God is speaking to somebody right now. God is speaking to a mama. God is speaking to daddies right now. God is speaking to people who are hurting right now. And God is waiting for you at this altar right now. God to touch you. God to touch you. God to give you hope. God to get you out of the ashes. So in Jesus' name, Father God, I deliver the mail. I've done exactly what you told me to do. And I pray right now, God, you keep speaking. Give us ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. God, you are hope. In Jesus' name. Save somebody today, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen.